For a long time, I felt like I had to compartmentalize my life. To be able to discuss it openly is so freeing, and it's also less scary. It doesn't overshadow everything anymore. I can just lay it out and say, yes, I was assaulted. It happened, and I'm still here. For a long time, I was really angry. I felt like I was on this trajectory. I was derailed and now I was going in the wrong direction or I was just stuck in this whirlpool looping and I would never go forward and I would never get my life back. The beauty of writing this book is that finally by the end, I was able to integrate these identities and know that being assaulted didn't take away from who I am. It is only now added to it and that it didn't derail my life. I know that I've grown and I move on. I think in the beginning I kept Emily Doe separate I would step into that character in court as a way of protecting my actual self because if I absorbed all of those personal attacks directly, it would have been too painful. In our culture, we tend to rationalize and minimalize behavior, and we dismiss these cases as sloppy mistakes. They are not mistakes, they are felonies. They should be treated as crimes. If we say, well, alcohol affected his decision-making, I know males who drink a lot, who don't end the night humping unconscious people, we should hold people to a higher standard of behavior because we know that that's possible. We shouldn't have to alter ourselves. We shouldn't have to constantly be on guard. What motivated me to write the statement was that in court, I was never allowed free range to speak. I could only answer directly to questions asked of me. I was constantly interrupted with objections. So it was really the first opportunity I had to be able to speak freely about everything I'd endured throughout the year. Watching the Me Too movement is why I am coming forward now. Seeing the way those women emerge, how powerfully they stand, the fact that they do it knowing they're going to be ripped apart is so eternally impressive to me. One note from a girl named Amanda who said, for the first time since the incident, almost two years ago, I feel like I have a voice. I feel weirdly at peace. I am fueled. I can speak. I cannot be silent anymore. The duct tape is off and I will speak. Then one girl signed her letter, love, the girl whose suffering has officially ended due to your letter. And then this was from a woman named Danielle. She said, I found a voice that I never knew was in me. And she talks about women she's worked with and says, it's not about if they will succeed, it's about when. We work hard every day to make this the world we deserve, one where we never experience sexual assault again. 
where the next generation of women grow up never having to experience it. The pain isn't completely gone. Eight years later, it's a bit like occasional memories of someone who passed a long time ago, but less pleasant. But alongside the days when I feel the weight of it and it feels like it will sink me are also the days when I know I am powerful because I am a part of the movement that is making that future possible. I hope that you have many days where you raise your arms in victory and feel powerful. You earned it.